hi guys welcome back to my vlog and in today's video we're going to be talking about shock the signs symptoms and diagnosis what is shock shock is a critical condition brought on by the sudden drop in blood flow through the body shock may result from trauma blood loss which could be internal or external bleeding an allergic reaction poison severe infection severe burns or other causes when a person is in shock, his or her organs aren't getting enough blood or oxygen. If untreated, this can lead to permanent organ damage or even death. What are the signs and symptoms of shock? Signs and symptoms of shock vary depending on the circumstances and may include rapid breathing, cool clammy skin, bluish thin to lips or fingernails, or gray in case of dark complexion, rapid pulse, nausea or vomiting, enlarged pupils, weakness or fatigue, dizziness or fainting, changes in mental status or behavior such as anxiousness or agitation. As the shock becomes more severe, they may have a weak pulse that you may not be able to feel, gaps in forehead, restlessness or aggressive behavior. They may become unresponsive. Seek emergency medical care if you suspect a person is in shock call your local emergency number then immediately take the following steps lay the person down and elevate the legs and feet slightly unless you think this may cause pain or further injury keep the person still and don't move him or her unless necessary begin cpr if the person shows no sign of life such as not breathing coughing or moving losing tight clothing and if needed Cover the person with a blanket to prevent chilling. Do not let the person eat or drink anything. If the person is bleeding, apply pressure over the bleeding area using a towel or a sheet. If the person vomits or begin bleeding from the mouth and no spinal injury is suspected, turn him or her onto the side to prevent choking. If this video has been helpful to you, feel free to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up don't forget to click on the notification bell so you never miss a new video thanks until next time bye Hi guys, welcome back to my vlog and in today's video we're going to be talking about vulva and vagina health. Good vulva and vagina health is easier than you think. It starts with understanding your own body, knowing what works for you and talking to your ob provider if anything irregular arises. Despite what you may read or watch, there are no specific products or requirements for proper vulva and vagina care. In fact, your vagina was built to self-clean and your most important job is to monitor and maintain a healthy clean surrounding. What is a vagina? A vagina is also known as a birth canal for those who bear children. The vagina connects with the cervix and through that the uterus. What is the vulva? The vulva is the area of the female sex organ that lies outside the vagina. These organs include folds of sensitive tissues called the labia. Labia means lips. The labia has two parts. The outermost folds are called the labia majora. A second set of folds called the labia minora is enclosed with the labia majora. The vulva also contains the mounded area made by the pubic bone called the mons pubis, a small round organ called the clitoris and the opening of the vagina and urinary canal called the urethra. How to have a healthy vagina and vulva? 1. Don't dodge. Dodging actually eliminates some of that healthy bacteria which changes the pH and makes you more susceptible to infection. If you still want to clean your vagina and vulva, make sure you use non-scented products and only wash the labia majora. 2. Keep the poops. It's okay to do a bit of trimming or removing hair along your swimsuit line. No one says it needs to be unruly, although you should rock it however you want. But please do keep your pubic's air. 
Pubic hair serves many purposes. It protects your vagina from extra bacteria and it also eliminates issues related to friction and sweating. Less hair remover also means less itch as hair grows back. If you must shave or landscape your pubis hair, try to use a natural shaving gel and creams. 3. Pee after sex Peeing after sex can help reduce likelihood of urinary tract infection. It helps you get some district clean up time. 4. Wear breathable clothing Breathable clothing and fabrics make a happy vagina. Cotton underwear is great. It has moisture-wicking properties to limit the amount of wetness that can promote bacterial growth. Changing out of wet clothing quickly can help limit issues as well, regardless of the kind of underwear you like. Just make sure to change it daily. 5. Eat healthy. Foods like yogurt, soy products, leafy veggies, cranberry juice and fruits helps boost the good bacteria in your vagina. They do not cause odor and prevent infections. 6. Change your sanitary products regularly. Use tampons, pad or menstrual cups, then make sure to change them regularly. This helps to keep unfriendly bacteria from disturbing the pH of your vagina. Make sure to only ever insert tampons with clean hands and never use sanitary products if you've dropped them on the floor. 7. Get regularly sexual health checks. Where possible, Make sure both you and your partner have a clear sexual health screen before having sex. Alternatively, use condom to protect yourself as much as possible. 8. Establish that you are not allergic to semen. Did you know that some women are allergic to semen? Which is also known as seminal plasma hypersensitivity. Semen allergy is not often talked about but generally affects women more than men. It is caused by antibodies in a woman's body which recognizes semen as harmful, meaning they go into overdrive. Although the condition is rare, so for women who experience semen allergy, I recommend sticking to condoms. 9. Wipe front to back when you pee. That is, wipe from the cleanest to the dirtiest. In that way, you're less likely to contaminate your vagina with any feces. It's best practice and puts you at a reduced risk of infection. 10. Take your time with sex, especially if you've just given birth. Having a baby puts the vagina canal through a pretty serious workout. So respect that it may need some downtime post-birth. Post-birth, there is no exact best time to resume sex. It will differ from person to person. It's just when you feel you're ready and when it feels comfortable for you. If this video has been helpful to you, feel free to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so you never miss a new video. Thanks until next time.
Like, share, and subscribe to Tokyo's Kitchen. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about top choking hazards for babies and toddlers. Choking happens when an object gets inhaled and then stuck in a person's airway. Babies and small children are particularly at risk of choking because of their small throat and trachea, making it easy for things to get stuck. Foods make up 50% of choking episodes in children and babies, which is why it's important to watch young kids carefully at meal times. But curious thoughts love to put practically anything in their mouth and small item can be particularly dangerous. Here is what caregivers need to know about some of the most shocking hazards for young children and how to keep your little ones safe. Top choking hazards for babies and toddlers. You should always keep these household items out of reach of babies and toddlers under the age of four. Coins, button, batteries, small toys like marble, balloons, dies, magnets, small cap, pen caps, small air clips, bow, air ties, etc. These foods should also be avoided until your child is at least age 4. Hot dogs, nuts and seeds, old grapes, and for babies uncooked raisins, popcorn, piece of raw veggies or hard raw fruits, hard candies, gums, chunk of meat and cheese, chunk of peanut butter. How to prevent choking in babies and toddlers. Since food is such a prevalent cause of choking, watch your child during meal times and being careful about what you feed them when they are little is crucial. Here are some key ways to prevent choking in babies and toddlers while they are eating. Stay close. You should actively watch every bite your child takes, especially when they are starting solid foods. Offer age appropriate food. Once your child has started finger foods, either after graduating from puri or as a part of baby led weaning, offer food in age appropriate size and texture. Keep portions small. Place only a few pieces at a time on the plate so your baby doesn't eat more than she can handle. Portion sizes can be a bit larger for toddlers, but still moderate. They can always ask for more if they are hungry. Sit down during meals. Not you, but your little one. Offer finger foods to your child only when they are sitting down. Never while they are crawling, running around, playing or recycling. Avoid risky food. No matter how strong your mealtime safety game is, Avoid giving children under the age of 4 foods from the list above, such as hot dogs, popcorn and nuts, which are common choking hazards. Provide age-appropriate toys. Age guidelines on toys don't only factor in how fun or difficult a toy would be for a kid. They also consider the toy's choking risk. Don't give toys or games meant for an older child to your toddler or baby, and never buy vending machine toys for a little one as they often have small parts and don't have to meet the same safety regulations as what's sold in the stores. Keep them in good condition. Be on the lookout for toys that are broken or falling apart that could potentially pose a choking risk. Keep things tidy. You might not normally give the change between your couch cushions or the pen caps under your desk much thought, 
but your child could easily discover those items and put them in their mouth. Check on the furniture between cushions in your car and anywhere else. Your child is to ensure that there is nothing they would access that they would choke on. Keep harmful objects out of your child's reach. There are some things you have to have in your home, like batteries or detergent pods, but they shouldn't be accessible to your little ones. Keep these kinds of items in your child-proof cabinet or containers out of harm way. How to prepare for shocking emergencies. The best way to prepare for shocking emergencies is to take a first aid and CPR course. You'll have the best possible training to ensure that you can help your child safely survive a choking incident. You can sign up for classes through the American Art Association or your local hospital. Choking can be a parent's worst nightmare, but thankfully it's a largely preventable situation and doesn't have to lead to worst case scenarios. With some proper precautions and safety training, you and your child can breathe a little easier. If this video has been helpful to you, feel free to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Do not forget to click on the notification bell so you never miss a new video. Thanks until next time. Like, share and subscribe to Toki's Kitchen. Seven reasons to keep having sex while you're pregnant. A positive pregnancy test can signify big changes for your sex life over the next nine months. From figuring out which sex positions feel comfortable with a growing belly to navigating symptoms like nausea and breast tenderness. Sex during pregnancy can definitely seem different than before you were expecting. But that doesn't mean your love-making sessions need to be put on hold. Is it good to have sex while pregnant? Doctors usually give the green light for sex during pregnancy. As long as I and your partner are both feeling up to it. That's because the amniotic sac and strong uterine amosols protect the fetus from damage. There are a few instances when sex during pregnancy should be avoided. If you think your water may have broken, you should not have intercourse and you should contact your doctor right away. Once your water breaks, Anything inserted into the vagina can introduce potentially harmful bacteria. Another time pregnancy sex might be unsafe is when your doctor has advised pelvic rest for any reason. This happens in some high-risk pregnancies or if your cervix is dilating too early. Reasons why a pregnant person should make love every day. Here are numerous wonderful reasons for pregnant women to make love every day either with a partner or on their own. Some of the great benefits of sex during pregnancy include 1. Sex can help you sleep. Sleep can be difficult during pregnancy. Luckily, there's a fun way to induce slumber sex. Research shows that having orgasms before bed can promote a better quality sleep. Interestingly, the reverse is also true. Better sleep is thought to increase sexual desires. 2. Sex improves your mental health of course. Sex makes you feel good in the moment, but research shows that a satisfying sex life offers a lasting boost to your mental health as well. In fact, regular sex is known to improve your mood as well as higher overall quality of life. 3. Sex can help maca delivery and recovery easier. Having an orgasm causes your pelvic muscles to contract, which can strengthen them. This helps to ease labor pains, improves bladder control, and potentially 
leads to a quicker recovery after giving birth, of course, you can always do schedules between. 4. Sex helps you tune into your body. Taking time for sexual pleasure and intimacy, either with a partner or solo, lets you slow down and tune into your body. Notice and appreciate all the wondrous physical changes happening as your pregnancy progresses. What better way to enjoy this stage than sensual touch? Love your body and be in awe of the beauty and power of growing a baby. Five, orgasms are a natural stress reliever. Orgasms flood your body with oxytocin, a hormone that produces endorphins, which leave you feeling calm and happy. When you find yourself stressed out, consider that sex releases endorphin that can make you feel more secure and even alleviate pain. Six, pregnant sex can feel even better. Pregnancy increases blood flow to your pubic area, which heightens sensitivity. So some people experience enhanced orgasms. Your vagina is also more lubricated because of increased estrogen levels, and your breasts can be more sensitive too. 7. Sex during pregnancy can help induce labor. It's a common misconception that having sex during pregnancy can cause preterm labor. In reality, you don't need to worry about that. But having sex when your body is already approaching labor might help speed things along. Research suggests those orgasms. Your feeling promote uterine attractions, which make kickstart the real thing. What's more, some theories indicate that theprostaglandes in semen can help repin the cervix. Just remember that you shouldn't have sex after your water breaks. Like, share, and subscribe to Toki's Kitchen.
like, share, and subscribe to Toki's Kitchen. Hi guys, welcome back to my vlog and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the early signs of pregnancy. Obviously, if you think you're pregnant, it's important to go to your midwife or your GP. It's best for you to know as soon as possible. So let's start with the most obvious signs. I'm going to be sharing with you 14 different signs to know if you're pregnant or not. So number one sign is missed period. Women who have a regular menstrual cycle will miss a period around four weeks after the last one. That means you will be about four weeks pregnant. So sign number two is nausea. Some call it morning sickness, but if you'd ask me, I'd say it's an holiday sickness. While some professionals would say, it's a pregnancy sickness so it's just the hormone hcg growing in the system and this makes you feel sick this starts around six week and usually ends around 13 weeks but for some people it can go all the way through the pregnancy another sign you may or may not know is implantation it is a short sharp pain in your lower abdomen so basically the pain that you're feeling is the fertilized egg implanted into the wall of your womb it feels like a pinch and it could be around the left or the right side so basically it's not everyone that gets it so sign number four is implantation bleeding this happens to some women this type of bleeding isn't heavy fresh red bleeding some women have it like a brown or pinkish loss when they wipe after going to the toilet this is the egg implanted into the wall of your uterus which causes the spotting some women mistake it for their period but it's not sign number five tiredness this is the most common sign of pregnancy this starts around when you miss your period and lasts up until around 14 weeks when you're pregnant, everything is all over the place, so you are just exhausted. Sign number six, sore boobs. This is also a very common sign of pregnancy. You may feel heavy, sore or tender. Some women describe it as tingling sensation, while others will say it's a pinching sensation behind the nipple. It's just your body getting ready to breastfeed. Sign number seven, backache backache is another common sign it is often mistaken to your starting um the starting of your period this is the hormone relaxing through your system and relaxing every muscle and this can make your back hurt sign number eight cervical mucus basically when you're pregnant at the start you get lots of thin sticky cervical mucus however as it advances the progesterone in your body builds and it makes it much thicker and stickier this can start at any point your hormones are always producing discharge but you might notice this as soon as after you miss your period this is going to continue all the way through but will change its look as the pregnancy progresses sign number nine the sorted sense of taste a lot of women say they have funny taste in their mouth which is called dysgosia it causes a sort of metallic taste in the mouth sign number 10 changes to skin hmm. a lot of women say their skin changes when they're pregnant it may go really bad and have a lot of spots or it may be better than usual that is you're glowing you might notice some sort of pimples, eczema, etc. It's also down to your hormones again and it usually passes around 13 weeks. Or for some, it might go all the way through the pregnancy. Sign number 11, dizziness. This is also really common. The progesterone is coming in and giving you a kick. So basically, it dilates your blood vessels, which means that your blood pressure drops and makes you feel lightheaded and dizzy. Sign number 13, hot flushes. Some women describe 
having hot flushes, it's usually linked to menopause, but it can happen in pregnancies too. And at around four to six weeks, it is not that common, but it is not unusual as well. So if you get this, do not panic. The final one is a very occasional one, an excessive thirst. It's nothing to worry about, but make sure you always go around with your bottle of water, especially during summer. As you've probably guessed, a lot of the signs are like the start of your period. If you're unsure, buy a pregnancy test kit or go to see your GP. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so as to when I post the video, you'll be the first to get it. So guys, see you next time. Bye. Cradle cup usually doesn't require medical treatment, as it usually goes away on its own. In the meantime, wash your baby's hair once a day with mild baby shampoo. If the scaling is heavy, apply mineral oil to the scalp for a couple of hours before shampooing. Then wash the hair as usual and brush the scalp lightly with a soft brush to loosen the scale. If frequent shampooing doesn't help, talk with your baby's doctor about products that might help, such as a low-potency hydrocortisone cream or a shampoo with 2% antifungal catechinazole medication. Be sure the shampoo doesn't get in your baby's eyes, as it may cause irritation. Don't use over-the-counter cortisone or antifungal creams without talking to your baby's doctor because some of these products can be toxic when absorbed through a baby's skin. Dandruff shampoos that contain salicylic acid aren't recommended for use in babies either because they can be absorbed through the skin. Home remedies treatment for cradle cap in babies. The following over-the-counter treatments and home care tips can help you control and manage cradle cap. Gently rub your baby's scalp with your fingers or a washcloth. To loosen the scales, don't scratch. Wash your baby's hair once a day with mild baby shampoo. Loosen the scales with a small, soft bristled brush or fine tooth comb before rinsing off the shampoo. If the scales don't loosen easily, rub petroleum jelly or a few drops of mineral oil onto your baby's scalp. Let it soak into the scales for a few minutes or hours if needed. Then brush and shampoo your baby's hair as usual. If you leave the oil in your baby's hair, the cradle cap may get worse. Once the scales are gone, wash your baby's hair every two to three days with a mild shampoo to prevent scale buildup. If your baby's cradle cap doesn't improve, with home care measures or starts to spread, make an appointment with your baby's pediatrician.
What to expect from your first period after pregnancy. What to expect from your first period after pregnancy. From glowing skin to a newfound appreciation for your body. There are many things to love about pregnancy. Another is that you'll have at least 9 months of freedom from your period, but after you deliver, you're probably curious. What will happen with your menstrual cycle? When your period returns often, depends on whether or not you breastfeed, and just like your life after baby. You might find your periods after pregnancy are somewhat different. Your postpartum period may be different from what you're used to. It may be heavier, involve more cramping, or come later than expected. When will my period return? Your period will typically return about six to eight weeks after you give birth, if you are in breastfeeding, if you do breastfeed. The timing for a period to return can vary. Those who practice exclusive breastfeeding might not have a period the entire time they breastfeed. Exclusive breastfeeding means that your baby is receiving only your breast milk, but for others, it might return after a couple of months, whether they're breastfeeding or not. If your period does return quickly, after giving birth and you had a vaginal delivery, your doctor might recommend that you avoid using tampons during your first menstruation post baby. This is because your body is still healing and tampons could potentially cause trauma. Ask your doctor if you can return to using tampons at your six week postpartum checkup. Why don't breastfeeding women get their periods as quickly? Typically, women who are breastfeeding don't get their periods as quickly because of the body's hormones. Prolactin, the hormone needed to produce breast milk, can suppress reproductive hormones. As a result, you don't ovulate or release an egg for fertilization. Without this process, you most likely won't menstruate. Will my period affect my breast milk? When your period does return, you may notice some changes in your milk supply or your baby's reaction to breast milk. The hormonal changes that cause your body to have your period may also influence your breast milk. For instance, you might notice a decrease in your milk supply or a change in how often your baby wants to nurse. The hormone changes might also affect your breast milk's composition and how it tastes to your baby. These changes are usually very minor, however, and shouldn't affect your ability to breastfeed your baby. It can also take some time for your cycle to regulate after birth. You might find that you have your first period skip a cycle and then have another period that comes sooner than expected. During your first postpartum year, can be normal for your periods to fluctuate in length, time between cycles, and intensity of bleeding. This is especially true if you're breastfeeding. Most postpartum women will have a normal menstrual cycle of 21 to 35 days with bleeding that lasts 2 to 7 days. Period cycles can change from what you experienced before pregnancy.
What postpartum symptoms should I watch out for? It's important that you call a doctor if you experience any of the following symptoms. Soaking through more than one pad every hour. Bleeding that's accompanied by sudden and severe pain as sudden fever. Bleeding continuously for more than seven days. Blood clots that are bigger than a softball. Foul smelling discharge, severe headache, trouble breathing, pain while urinating. Contact your healthcare provider. If you experience these symptoms or anything else that concerns you, related to your period as some of these symptoms may indicate an infection. Like, share and subscribe to Toki's Kitchen. Hi guys, welcome back to my vlog. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all you need to know about diabetes type 1. What is type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes is a condition in which your immune system destroys insulin making cells in your pancreas. These are called beta cells. The condition is usually diagnosed in children and in young people. So it is used to be called juvenile diabetes. Type 1 diabetes symptoms. Signs are often subtle, but they can become severe. They include fatigue, extreme thirst, increased hunger, dry mouth, upset stomach and vomiting, blurry vision, frequent urination and bedwetting in children, unexplained weight loss even though you are eating and feel hungry, crankiness or mood swing. If you or your child has the symptoms, it is essential to see your healthcare provider and has to be tested for type 1 diabetes as soon as possible. The sooner you are diagnosed, the better. If a diagnosis is delayed, untreated type 1 diabetes can be life-threatening due to a complication called diabetes-related ketoacidosis, DKA. Seek emergency medical care if you or your child are experiencing any combination of the following symptoms. Fruity smelling breath, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, rapid breathing, confusion, drowsiness, loss of consciousness. Causes of type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes develops when the immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys cells in your pancreas that makes insulin. This destruction can happen over months or years, ultimately resulting in the total lack of insulin. How is type 1 diabetes diagnosed? Doctor uses a blood test that measures the amount of sugar in the blood by the use of a glucometer. High blood sugar shows that the child has diabetes. Then the doctor will do more blood tests to find out what type it is. Kids with type 1 diabetes often go to the pediatric endocrinologist. This kind of doctor finds out and treats problems affecting hormones like diabetes. How can parents help? Now is a perfect time to help your child create healthy habit for life. Learn all you can about diabetes. The more you know about diabetes type 1, the more confidence you'll feel about helping your child manage it day by day. Understanding of diabetes lets you advocate for your child. You can share your knowledge with important people in your child's life like the grandparents, teachers, coaches and babysitters. Doing so helps you build a community of support for your child. Get involved with daily care. Help your child put their care plan into action every day. From counting carbs to calculating insulin doses and giving injections, there is a lot to learn at first. Share the responsibility with your child over time. They will be able to take on more on their own. Encourage your child. It can take a while to adjust to the new responsibilities that comes with type 1 diabetes. Remind your child that many kids of their age have type 1 diabetes and they follow a similar care plan. If your child has concerns that you are not sure 
of how to handle. Ask the care team. They will connect you with the right resources. Can type 1 diabetes be cured? Currently, there isn't a cure for type 1 diabetes. However, what we know about the condition is constantly evolving. New technologies in medicine are being developed and researchers are making important breakthroughs. Right now, people of all ages are leading full elderly lives with type 1 diabetes. You can too. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so you never miss a new video. Bye until next time. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Tokyo's Kitchen. We are we talk about health, wellness, food and motherhood. And in today's video, we'll be talking about steps to avoid diaper rash in babies. Before we dive into the video, if this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Toke and welcome to my channel. Please kindly subscribe, comment, like and share my videos. To my returning subscribers, I want to say a very big thank you for your support. Now let's get into today's video. What is diaper rash? Diaper rash is a common form of irritated skin which is called dermatitis that looks like patches of inflamed skin on your baby's bottom. It is often related to wet or infrequent changed diapers. Skin sensitivity and chaffing. It usually affects babies, though anyone who wears diaper regularly will develop this condition. What causes diaper rash? Usually, diaper rash is as a result of an irritation, infection, or an allergy. Now, let's go to the irritation. A baby's skin can get irritated when the diaper is left on for too long and poop, or the diaper itself, rubs against the skin repeatedly. Infection, urine, changes the skin pH levels and that lets the bacteria fungi grow more easily. The substance that stops diaper from leaking also prevents air circulation, creating a warm moist environment where bacteria and fungi can thrive, causing a rash. Now let's go to the allergies. Babies with sensitive skin can also develop rashes. Some types of detergent, soaps, diaper, or baby wipes can affect the sensitivity of the skin, causing a rash. How can I prevent this diaper rash? To prevent the diaper rash, keep your baby's skin as dry and clean as possible and change diaper often so that the poop and the pee don't irritate the skin. Try these tips to help prevent diaper rash. 1. Change your baby's soiled or wet diapers as soon as possible and clean the area well. Secondly, occasionally soak your baby's bottom di between diaper change with warm water. You can gently scoop the water over your baby's bottom with your hand or squeeze it from a plastic bottle. Let your baby's skin dry completely before you put on another diaper. Pat the skin gently with a soft cloth when drying it. Rubbing can cause irritation. Change the diaper on loosely to prevent chaffing. Change the diapers often, ideally every two hours or so, and after every poop. Applying diaper cream or ointment with each diaper change can prevent the babies that have sensitive skin from having diaper rash. If the rash doesn't go away, gets worse, all sores appear on the baby's skin. Talk to your doctor. Also get medical care if your baby has fever, pus, or is draining from the rash, or if your child is fussier than usual. Depending on what type of rash your baby has, the doctor may choose to use an antifungal cream or an antibiotic cream, or may recommend other changes to your diaper routine. Sometimes, if those changes don't help a rash, caused by an allergic reaction. The doctor may prescribe a mild steroid cream for a few days until the rash go away. All right, guys, I think um, we've come to the end of the video and um, I'd like you to subscribe, share, comment, and like my videos. And thanks until next time, bye.
10 Things You Didn't Know About Babies One, their first poop doesn't stink. The black, tar-like stuff called meconium is made up of mucus, fluid from the womb, and anything else they digested while inside mom. But it doesn't yet have the gut bacteria that make poop smelly. As soon as you start feeding a baby, bacteria will start colonizing. Two, some birthmarks will disappear. Stork bites or angel kisses. A pink or red aerial often on the forehead, eyelids, bridge of the nose, or back of the neck. And Mongolian spots flat, bluish patches that look like ink stains on the back or bottom usually fade within a few years. We don't know what causes them. Three, they cry without tears at first. Babies start crying around two to three weeks. But tears don't show up until they're about a month old, late afternoon and early evening. Our prime fussing time, often, it's for no reason, and nothing you do will help. Four, their tonsils have taste buds. Although a baby has about the same number of taste sensors as kids and younger adults, they cover more areas, including the tonsils and the back of the throat. A newborn can taste sweet, bitter, and sour, but not salty until around five months. It's a matter of survival. Breast milk is sweet. While bitter and sour may be harmful, when they start on solid food. They'll tend to like the same things mom ate while pregnant and breastfeeding. Five, sometimes infants stop breathing. Likely when they're sleeping, they may pause without a breath for five to 10 seconds, just enough time to make a new mom or dad panic. Irregular breathing is normal. But if your baby stops breathing for a longer time or turns blue, it's a medical emergency. When babies are excited or after crying, they may take more than 60 breaths in a minute. Six, newborns have breasts. When they're first born, both boys and girls can look like they have small breasts. These may even leak milk, don't squeeze. The firm little lumps though. They form because babies absorb estrogen from mom and they'll usually go away within a few weeks. Baby girls could also have a mini period or vaginal discharge that lasts a few days. Seven, they like to face right. Only 15% of newborns prefer to turn their head left when lying on their back. It seems to be related to a gene like having dimples. This bias lasts for a few months, and it may help explain why more people are right-handed, too. Eight, they have more of certain brain cells. Although a baby's brain will get bigger, more than doubling in size the first year, it already has most of the nerve cells that carry electrical messages. Many of these neurons won't get replaced as they die. So adults have fewer of them. The connections between cells get trimmed as babies get older, which helps them focus but also cuts back on creativity. Nine, they can scare themselves. It doesn't take much to startle a newborn, a loud noise, Strong scent, bright light, sudden motion, even their own cries. You'll know it's happened when they fling their arms out to the sides. 
hands open, then quickly closes up and tucks back in toward their body. This Mora reflex might have developed as a warning signal that a young monkey was off balance, so mom could prevent a fall. Ten, baby boys get erections. It often happens just before they pee. Consider it your warning to take cover during a diaper change. We don't know exactly why but it's nothing to be worried or ashamed about. You might even see one on an ultrasound before they are born. His penis may look large at birth, and that's normal, too. Their hormones and moms play a role, as well as bruising and swelling from the birth process. Like, share, and subscribe to Tookie's Kitchen. Abigail, Hebrew for a father's joy, Alexandria Greek and English for defender of mankind, Amora, Greek for eternal beauty, Amelia German for industrious, Amelie, variation of Amelia, also German for industrious, Angelina, Greek for heavenly messenger, Arabella, German for beautiful eagle, Alia, Hebrew for like a beautiful melody. Bailey, French for bailiff, an old English. For fortification. Belinda, Spanish for beautiful or pretty. Bell, Spanish for beautiful. Blair, Gaelic for plain. Bonnie, Scottish for good. Britannia, anglicized version of Britain, which is a section of France. Chanel. French for canal or perfume. Callista, Greek for most beautiful or pretty. And bright eyed. Charlotte, French for little and womanly. Danielle, Hebrew for judged by God. Eleanor, Greek for mercy. Elise, German for noble or Hebrew for God's oath. Amelia, Latin for eager. Ezra, Latin for esteem. Esmolda, Spanish for emerald. Erica, Scandinavian for ever powerful or honorable ruler. Faith, Latin for trust. Felicity, Latin for fortunate or happy. Gabriel, Hebrew for God is my strength. Isabella, Spanish for consecrated to God. Ela, Spanish or Scottish for Ireland. Ivy, Old English for vine. Jasmine, Persian for a form of flowering olive. Jessica, Hebrew for wealthy one. Valentina, Latin for good health. Valerie, Latin for strong. Venus, Greek for the goddess of love. Victoria, Latin for victory. Violet, Latin for purple. Vivian, Latin for living or lively. Like, share, and subscribe to Tookie's Kitchen. Characteristics we hope our child will display. Some people choose a meaning and look for a name. With that definition, we have compiled this list of unique baby boy names for you. 
Alexander. Alexander is a Greek name. And the meaning of this classic name is defender of man. Other short variants of the name include Alec, Alex, Alexei, Alexis and Xander. Adam. This name has a Hebrew origin. And the meaning of the name is to be red, or son of the red earth. It is a popular Old Testament name. Arlo. Arlo sounds genuine, unique, and amiable. It means fortified hill. Arthur. The meaning of the name Arthur is courageous and noble. The name is derived from the Roman name Artemis. August. This summertime month name meaning great is full of warmth and happiness. Perfect for an August born baby. Anthony. The name Anthony is a great option. With a Latin origin and the meaning of the name is priceless one. A variant of the name is Anton and Tony. Caleb. A beautiful name with roots going back to the Bible. Caleb means devotion to God. David. David is a Hebrew name meaning beloved. This is a character from the Old Testament. A nickname for the name includes Dave. Ernest. Its claim to fame is Ernest. The lead of Oscar Wilde's. Importance of being Ernest. And Ernest Hemingway. The American writer. Ernest means resolute. Ethan. This name hasn't looked back ever since the 20th century. Ethan means strong or firm. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. This Hebrew boy name's meaning is God's strength. Jeffrey. The boy named Jeffrey has an Anglo-Saxon. French origin and the meaning of the name is Pledge of Peace. A modern variant of the name is Jeffrey. Jacob. Jacob has a Hebrew root and it means to be behind, to follow, or seizing by the heel. Variations include Jacob, Jack, or Jake, John. John has a Hebrew origin and the meaning of the name is God is gracious. Liam. This is a shorter form of the Irish name, Uliam, and the meaning of the name is Helmet of Will. It is also a shorter version of the name William, Joseph. The name has a Hebrew origin, and the meaning of this boy's name include Jehovah increases. Variations of the name are Joe or Joey. Martin. The name has a Latin origin and it means God of War. Or Servant of Mars, Matthew. Matthew is of Hebrew origin and means Gift of God. Michael. The name means who is like God. And it has a Hebrew origin. The name belonged to a character in the Bible. Nicholas. This is a Greek name meaning people of victory. The name is derived from the Greek word Nikolaos. Kion. Kion is boy's name of Indian origin, meaning grace of God. Noah. This Hebrew name means rest and comfort. This is a classic but uncommon boy name, perfect for your baby. Samuel. Samuel is a Hebrew name meaning God heard. Or name of God, the short form of the name includes Sam. Stephen, with Greek roots. The meaning of this cool and classic name is crown. 
Zion. Zion is of Hebrew origin and means highest point. Like, share, and subscribe to Tookie's Kitchen.